What's up everybody? It is good to get back in the studio today. Today we're going to be looking at whether or not we truly need to have things like DSP in our studio. I want to upgrade eventually my audio interface. You know, I've been really curious about where should I invest my hard-earned cash, right? Should I invest in preamps and things like real good, real nice hardware preamps? Like there's all sorts of really nice emulations of the Neve preamps that are out there, the 1073s and things like that. There's really nice um, Rupert Neve like style, really high-end preamps that are out there that are of course really good options and then of course you've got the audio interfaces that are kind of meant to be Swiss Army knives or all-in-one packages that have all sorts of DSP processing power loaded into it so that you can run the most sort of top, top end or top quality uh, plugins out there in a DSP sort of an environment so that you can use those plugins while tracking in a busy session and doing things like over so the main use case that this this would for me really really help out or really really come into handy is in a busy session where I've already got a lot of things going on and I want to do some overdubs maybe I want to do some tracking of additional vocal takes or it's like doing reshoots for a movie you get into the mix and you just realize that it needs this one little part to be recorded into the session in order to make it just that much more perfect or awesome so ultimately, the use case is you've got a busy session and you need to do some tracking, right? Well, I've got right here, let's just jump into Pro Tools. And here we have our session for um, Blow Up the Outside World, which is the cover that we're working on uh, for Soundgarden. Let's give it a listen right here as the first verse vocal comes in. <laughs> Ultimately, the use case that I want to try to take a look at today is whether or not, okay, I've got all sorts of things going on in the mix already. I'm making all sorts of decisions. I've got lots of plugins going. I've basically got this SSL, this new SSL channel loaded on the majority of all of the tracks. Um, and it's like, well, what if I want to come in and record some new vocals? What if I want to come in and record some new guitars or whatever? Then I want to be able to come in and uh, set it to a very, very low buffer so that it's, you know, very, very low latency and so that it's almost imperceivable. And um, I want to be able to hear my material as I'm recording it in a really, really nice professional way. And so normally with that would mean from a playback engine standpoint is let's just jump into setup and playback engine is that you would want to set up your playback engine for a hardware buffer of 64 samples and that basically at 48k session that equates to um you know something close to 1.3 milliseconds of latency it's near imperceivable okay so if i input monitor these channels then you're going to hear a little bit of phasing. You're going to hear my voice a second time coming through on this Vox one channel right here. But what that means is that it's actually being processed through this gate. It's cutting off that room noise. It's being processed through this Neve preamp channel, giving it a little volume boost and a little bit of uh, vibe here from the Neve preamp. And it's also going through an 1176 bluey right so it's it's being processed here in a way that is you know that that's this is the the sound that i want for the voice ultimately this is the way i want it to sound so um you know it's going through an 1176 into an la2a style compression and you know whenever i'm recording or tracking i'm also going to track a di channel right but ultimately, what I want to track is sort of the vibe of the sound that I'm going for. So it's ultimately like, what do I want to hear? Do I want to hear just the dry channel or do I want to hear this? Do I want to hear kind of a nice, uh, crispy, radio-ready, in a way, vocal? You know, and that's ultimately, that's what I want to hear when I'm recording, right? And so I'm not alone in that in that regard. This is the whole sort of reason why you would want to either invest in DSP so that you can record through these kinds of plugins or invest in the actual hardware units that these plugins emulate, right? And so that's kind of the 
the journey or the question that I'm aiming to sort of answer in this next short series of videos is, is it feasible to come into a busy session already and do some overdubs and uh, track through these kinds of plugins and be able to hear the end result, sort of, you know, the, the vocal processing. Ultimately, I will process the vocal once I'm finished actually mixing it and going through the material in a, in a really, um, you know, just uh, j just a really detailed way. This will be us, the, the, the vocal will be processed in a similar chain just like this, right? But I want to hear that chain as I'm recording it, you know? So ultimately, that's what I want to do. Let's give it a shot, shall we? So we see that my playback engine is set to 64 samples. I've got this Plugin Alliance uh, Lindell 80 series uh, sort of Neve style channel set up as the sort of preamp stage. I've got this 1176 Bluey compressor sort of set up here as the compression stage. Let's get about three to five dB of compression happening there. That, that looks good. And then I've got this uh, 1176, oh, I'm sorry, this uh, LA-2A uh, compression happening here with about three to five dB of compression there as well. So that's nice. Nice and forward, radio ready, ready to go. So um, let's start listening. Let's see if we can start recording here and see what happens. That's about where the, um, right here about when the space fade stops is about where the vocal needs to come in. So let's go ahead and nothing seems to kill me. No matter how hard I try, nothing is closing. So what can I say? It works really, really well, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, um, you know, this is ultimately, I'm not going to keep this take. I just wanted to demonstrate that this is how I've been recording. A lot of this song has come together with a lot of these plugins already going. Now I will admit there are limits to what I'm trying the the point that I'm trying to make here is that if I just want to invest in DSP just to be able to record through plugins, I can kind of already do that right now, right? And I say kind of because there are limits to what I'm saying here, but the point I'm trying to make is that you can already right now, depending on what plugins you use, you can already record into plugins right now, right? And so if you want to hear that sort of radio ready, already leveled vocal, look, look, look at this vocal right? It's already in the pocket. And I did a little adjustment. If I don't know if you saw me sort of reach over and I turned the preamp gain 
down on my hardware preamp just to try to, and you can see I didn't level out that vocal <laughs> change at all. Here's my verse, right? Here's my chorus. But it's, you know, it's, it's already working. It's already working super well. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the way that this sounds. And um, it's, it, it's freaking awesome. So let's just give that a listen back. Let's hear what that sounded like. Let's listen for any pops or anything. I'm actually just going to solo the vocal just because I know that if I don't do that, then it's not going to be a true, we won't be able to really tell that well if there's any pops or weirdness happening within this material. So let's give it a listen. Here is the processed vocal, right? 64 sample buffer, right? Processed through these plugins live, right? I hear nothing. I hear nothing but silence in here, right? No pops, no nada. Nothing seems to kill me. No matter how hard I try. Sounds clean. Nothing is closing my eye. Nothing can be right. Sounds giving everything I need. Give you everything. Giving everything I need. Giving everything I need. Give you everything. That has a really good clenched teeth quality to it, doesn't it? Give everything. That's really, really good. And that's I, I've been going back and forth of whether or not I want to sort of replicate that or um you know, do it in the way that I've gotten it already. I've gotten some pretty good performances that I've already sort of, you can see, I've kind of already cut it together. But anyway, that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to show you we can track through plugins right now. And so it's something to think about. I'm not trying to answer the question in one video. I think this is going to take many videos and many explorations of this sort of topic to really come to, at least for me, come to a consensus that I can bank on because that's ultimately where i'm gonna have to take this decision to the bank and i'm gonna have to spend money eventually to upgrade my audio interface to buy an audio interface that supports many preamps and many microphone inputs and so how do i want to do that and where do i want to invest the cash do i want to invest it in dsp processing or do i want to invest it in preamps like actual nice you know like to get like instead of, you know, investing in DSP that can run a certain amount of Neve channels at once, how about buying the certain amount of Neve channels that I think I'm going to need? You know what I mean? And, and, and that's, a, you know, that's a decision also. That's a choice also. So as you can see, I was able to very clearly record the vocal through the plugins and had absolutely no issues. Now, I did that through some experimentation. And as you can see, I do have some things that I have disabled. I, I have, you know, a, a bucket of effects down here that I've turned off. I have kind of a vocal hair channel. It's a distortion channel turned off. I have a bass guitar hair channel, also a distortion channel turned off. You know, these channels are running Saturn, you know, and so um, I, I turn them off and I seem to get better performance in being able to record uh, certain things. And so there is a, there's a little bit of that, right? There's a balancing act between, um, you know, being able to record through software plugins and being able to have certain channels running that might have some plugins that might be a little bit more CPU intensive than the others. And you just have to kind of find that balance. One thing to also keep in mind is that, you know, I, I've been able to also set my playback engine uh, hardware buffer size to 128 samples, and I've gotten great performance with barely perceivable latency there as well. So that's something to also consider. It's it's always a balancing act with this kind of stuff because, you know, what the, the, the point I'm kind of trying to make here is that tracking through plugins is right now with the new M1 chips is a reality. It's something that you can do right now without DSP because this has DSP level 
processing in the box, right? And I think as all of the plugin softwares that I'm tracking through, as they all eventually come around to being fully supported by the M1 chips and everything is able to run optimally without the Rosetta translation, then I think that it's just going to even get better and better from here. And so, you know, uh, I'm glad that I have a little time to think about this and that I'm not having to, uh, I, I don't have anything other than my own projects and my own timeline and schedule to consider when I am, you know, considering the choice around what sort of audio interface to invest in. But ultimately, the one that I want to invest in, I want to use it for years and decades to come. So I want to make sure that I make the right decision. And does that need to be a DSP-based system or does it need to be a system that's going to rely on hardware preamps instead? Don't know, you know, and I think I'm going to keep exploring that um, on this channel. I'll probably keep coming out with some videos that talk more about tracking through plugins and different scenarios and use cases that I run into. You guys feel free to let me know in the comments what use cases you guys run into when tracking through plugins, what kind of plugins you're interested in using. Um, and I'm going to do a bit more research and uh, we're going to, we're going to go through this journey together and uh, I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. So looking forward to it. Until next time.